Hello guys, welcome to our channel. Today, we are going to learn about introduction to function and relation. Before we start, have you ever wondered why do we need to learn function? In our modern world of science and technology, we are constantly studying and performing experiments between different variables and therefore making new theories. Imagine function as a factory. We need to have raw material, for example, milk which serves as an input before we can produce cheese, which is the output. So basically, function studies a relationship between an input variable with an output variable. Let's study the relation between set X and set Y. In set X, we have a set of numbers 0, 1 and 2. In set Y, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Set X is mapped to set Y by a relation of multiply by 2. All the elements in set X are called domain. All the elements in set Y are called codomain. Every element in domain is also called an object. Notice the element 0, 2 and 4 in set Y, which are connected to the objects in set X, are called the images. We can write it in a set of range, in this case 0, 2 and 4. This is an example of an arrow diagram. There are four types of relation. The first one, one-to-one -one relation. As you can see here, every object is connected to only one image. The second one, many-to-one -one relation. As you can see here, at least two different objects share the same image. The third one, one-to-many relation. As you can see here, one object produces at least two different images. The fourth one, many-to-many -many relation, is actually a combination of many-to-one and one-to-many relation. Function is a special relation where each object has only one image. From this definition, we can conclude that only one-to-one -one relation or many-to-one -one relation is considered a function. Besides an arrow diagram, we can represent a relation in the form of ordered pairs or plotting a graph. This is an example of how we write in ordered pairs. To plot a graph, you just have to remember, object will represent the x-coordinate. Meanwhile, your image will represent the y-coordinate. Now let's try this question. Now we will determine whether the following graph represents a function. If it is a function, we will determine the type of function. The first one, vertical line test, is used to test whether the graph represents the function. We have to draw a few vertical lines parallel to the y-axis on the graph. If there is only one point of intersection in each line, then this graph is a function. The second one, horizontal line test, is used to test whether the graph is a one-to-one -one function. We have to draw a few horizontal lines parallel to the x-axis on the graph given. If there is only one point of intersection in each line, then it is a one-to-one -one function. As you can see here, this graph is a one-to-one -one function. Now let's try on this graph. This is an example of a modulus graph. Step 1. We need to draw a few vertical lines parallel to the y-axis 
on the graph. Here we can see there is only one point of intersection in each line. Therefore, this graph is a function. Step 2. We need to determine whether this graph is a one-to-one -one function. We have to draw a few horizontal lines parallel to the x-axis on this graph. Notice, there are two different points of intersection on this graph. Therefore, this graph is a many-to-one function. For this graph, the vertical line intersects on two different points on the graph. Therefore, this graph is not a function. We do not have to proceed with the horizontal line test if the graph is not a function. Now let's try this question. function can be written in the form of equation. For example, fx equals to 3x plus 1. For this function, the object is x. The image is 3x plus 1. Now let's look at this example. Given fx equals to 2x plus 3, find the image of 2 and the object of 5. To answer this question, you need to understand the concept of image and object. The first question, find the image of 2. You have to remember, the question asks you to find image. Therefore, 2 is your object. You need to substitute 2 in the x. f2 equals to 2 times 2 plus 3. Therefore, you get the answer 7. The second question, find the object of 5. You need to find the object. 5 is your image. Therefore, fx equals to 5. 2x plus 3 equals to 5 and you get the answer x equals to 1. Now let's look at the second example. Given the function fx equals to 2x minus 10. Question 1. Find the image of 3. Question 2. Find the object which has the image negative 2. Question 3. Find the value of t if the function t plus 2 equals to 80. To answer question A, just follow the same step. You need to find the image. So 3 is your object. You need to substitute 3 in the x and you get your answer negative 4. To answer question B, you need to find the object. So negative 2 is your image. fx equals to negative 2 and you get the answer x equals to 4. To answer question C, you need to be careful. You need to substitute t plus 2 in the x and finally you get your answer t equals to negative 1. Now let's look at the third example. Given function fx equals to 5x minus 2, find the value of x when the function fx is mapped onto itself. To answer this question, you need to understand when fx is mapped onto itself, it means fx equals to x. Therefore, 5x minus 2 equals to x. And you get the answer x equals to half.
Now let's try this question. This question is a little tricky. Hope you get the correct answer. Good luck! Look at this example. Given function gx equals to 5 divided by 2x plus 1. Find the value of x when function gx is undefined. To answer this question, you have to understand the basic principle of fraction. The bottom part of the fraction is called the denominator. You cannot put a zero in your denominator. For example, 5 divided by 0 or 1 divided by 0. If you press 1 divided by 0 in the calculator, you get an error. Same goes to this function. Your denominator is 2x plus 1. When the function is undefined, 2x plus 1 equals to 0. And you get your answer, x equals to negative 1 over 2. Now let's try this question. You may try this question. This question is a good example of how we can apply function in our daily life. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!